Welcome to a Business Minute with Lily Lopez presented by the South Florida Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Today, it is my honor to have with us Mr. Luis Arango. Luis is Senior Vice President and the Head of SunTrust International Wealth Management. He offers his clients more than 15 years of comprehensive wealth management experience with a team approach that brings together specialists in investments, financial planning, credit, and estate strategies. He's a native of Miami, Florida, and is a graduate of Florida State University with an MBA from Nova Southeastern University. He was also a member of the Florida International Bankers Association. As part of the international wealth management team, Lewis works with the experts whose whole focus is to bring comprehensive and highly customized business and personal financial solutions to successful high net worth international families and businesses. Together, they develop a holistic financial plan that meets their clients' short and long-term goals. SunTrust Private Wealth Management is part of SunTrust Bank with a proud 120 year heritage of commitment to helping its clients manage their wealth and achieve their goals. They're committed to meeting the needs of its clients by building and continually strengthening long-term relationships and by offering comprehensive wealth management capabilities to meet sophisticated and often complex needs. His community involvement involves that he's the board chair for the March of Dimes, Miami Market. He, he's the chair for the SunTrust Hispanic Teammate Network United Way Young Leader. He's an honorary director of our South Florida Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And we are so happy to welcome Mr. Luis Arango here today to a business meeting with Lily Lopez. This was long and I know I had to cut it short. Wow, you have such an impressive bio. Welcome, Luis. So how are you? Tell me. I'm doing you great. Thank today? you, Lily. We're feeling great. So thank you for having me today. It's, it's always a pleasure to connect yes. with you and the, and the Chamber of Commerce. So I appreciate you having me on today. Absolutely. So tell me about a Truist and SunTrust. I know they, they merged, but you're still part of SunTrust, but, or, or is it Truist SunTrust or what's going to happen? Because I know that you are SunTrust, but I know that, that BB&T and SunTrust are now Truist. So tell me a little bit about what, what happened there. Correct. Correct. So the merger was announced in February of 2019, and uh, we are one organization as of December uh, last year. Uh, we are still kind of merging the banks. Obviously, that process, it takes its time between the technology and the platforms and everything. So we're operating as parallel banks, but we are one organization under Truist. Okay, okay. So Truist. And so tell me, I know that Truist is doing a lot of things for Hispanic, uh, Hispanic, not Hispanic, and, and all small businesses in general. But since we're Hispanic Chamber, I always focus on, on Hispanic. So what, what, what are you doing um, with the small business lending. I know you're, you're lending a lot. I know the PPP, you have guides you, you to help people. So elaborate a little bit on, on that so that our, uh, our members and the community in general knows what, what Truist is doing. Absolutely. So I think one of our strengths as we come under Truist is we kept the community banking model, which provides us uh, a lot of autonomy and decision-making and a way to connect directly with the local markets that we serve in each of the regions, because obviously it's two large organizations coming together. But I think it's critically important that we keep that personal touch with our clients. Now, obviously with this pandemic, it's had a huge impact on the economy, our small business clients, our small business partners, the local communities, regardless of demographic. Obviously the, this, this pandemic has not discriminated against anyone. Uh, in terms of our small business, we were one of the top lenders in the PPP program. So we did over $12 billion in loans wow. to 32,000 companies, which helped save about a million, about a million jobs. Um, obviously, I don't have the local breakdown of each region, but that's more of the macro level. Uh, in terms of our community, we have a Truist Cares initiative, and we actually gave 355 grants totaling $50 million to frontline needs. Uh, and mortgage relief, we, we provided uh, over $100 million in monthly mortgage relief payments during this pandemic, because we understand the, the client um, urgency, the situation going on. So we really wanted to extend a, a helping hand. You know, our, we're also participating. We have business payment reliefs. Uh, we also have a small business recovery guide, because we believe education is an important aspect coming out of this pandemic. So, you know, holding our client's hand, our small business client's hands, walking them through this process, this situation to try to help overcome some of these challenges. And then we're also participating actively in the Main Street Lending Program to kind of help some of these small and medium-sized businesses get back on track as well. Right, and as uh, you're the head of uh, International Wealth Management, so Correct. I know you travel. So how are you doing now that you can't travel? Just basically just connecting 
Correct. So obviously everybody, <laughs> everybody has had to pivot and reinvent themselves. Uh, staying connected in our, with our clients is critically important to what we do. You know, and it's hard because, you know, we're a relationship bank. So our relationships with our clients is first and foremost our priority. So obviously now we've had to pivot and do it more virtually uh, and less face to face. Um, we're not traveling as extensively as we used to to see our clients, obviously, with the travel limitations and the safety precautions. Mm -hmm. But we're noticing that more clients are coming to kind of see us. They'd mm -hmm. rather be stateside with the resources that we do have available here. So they're coming and spending more time in their second or third homes. So, um, so we are set, starting to connect with them. So you do have clients from other countries that are able to come to the United States? Correct, correct. There are some restrictions, but some countries don't have. Right, so if they, taken? correct. So some, some of the restrictions have been lifted. Some, okay. obviously, there's still the travel bans. Okay. And as things are opening up with Latin America, we're seeing more and mom spend a little bit more time. And plus with their children doing the virtual learning, oh. they're like, we can do this from pretty much anywhere. So we'd rather be in Miami or South exactly. Florida rather than be in their home country at this time. Right, and do you miss the personal touch, like me being I, the personal? I, I do, I do. I, I, right. I miss actually engaging with clients. I, I travel with my team abroad and see their businesses. I, you know, I visit the farms, I see the families. A lot of times we're having dinner with the family in their home. That must be uh, fascinating. So that, that must it be is, fascinating. it's great, oh. it is great. Oh my God, so a typical day for you now, describe that and a typical day for you without the pandemic. So typical day, there's a lot of meetings, obviously, <laughs> um, you know, and it's just working on business strategy, really, how are we going to reinvent ourselves? What is the future going to look like? You know, our, our goals, our, our production activity, the way we serve our clients cannot change. Right. Um, you know, we have to continue to meet our client needs, regardless, and those needs are going to change now. So it's understanding what the new needs are, what the new um, wants for the families and, and, and try to kind of pivot and reinvent ourselves and then look at capabilities. What capabilities don't we have that our clients are really in demand for that we can kind of bring and add on to the table to help them um, kind of get through this situation. Absolutely. And how do you see the, the, the economy 2021? Do we see because some people say the V-shape, I don't know. Some people say it's going to be bad. So like like in your personal opinion, not the bank, like your opinion. My, so my, my personal awesome. opinion, so so South, let's say South Florida economy. So one is the yeah, macro level, the other is South Florida. So let's South Florida, focus on the South Florida. We have a heavy concentration on tourism, right? So there's mm -hmm. a big, big, big aspect of tourism, whether it be hotels, restaurants, bars, entertainment. You know, that's a big part of the yes. South Florida economy. It's you know, I think, I, I believe that's going to be more of a U-shaped rather than a V-shaped, you know, as they kind of start to reinvent. Mm -hmm. I mean, we depend a lot of a lot on foreign funds coming in to to kind of pump up that tourism that demand and obviously with the travel restrictions we still haven't felt the full recovery yet uh, mm -hmm. i think 2021 will definitely be better than 2020 uh, i believe hotels entertainment industry are going to have to reinvent what safety precautions are necessary for them to open up safely and attract mm -hmm. you know attract their client base again Exactly. And as I've been saying, and when I go and speak on radio, actually, of course, via the phone and all these shows that I do, um, we do know that 99% of the people survive if they get COVID. So we can't stop the economy. We have to protect the vulnerable. We have to protect our seniors, but we can't stop our economy because like the World Health Organization just recently announced, we were talking about that prior to mm -hmm. starting the the um, the show um, the consequences are going to be very very negative. There will be a lot of deaths, world hunger. There's a lot of people committing suicide. There's a lot of people with anxiety. I have friends that tell me that they have their businesses, and they have a, a particular friend who's a member of the chamber says I have four employees that have had heart attacks and have passed away. Not single one of them have passed away of COVID. So it's not minimizing because we, we know that this is scary. It's a very bad virus, a very bad pandemic. But I think that we're learning about it more and more. And eventually we get a vaccine. I, I do hope that, that our economy is able to, to stabilize and, and be as it was before because our the, the, the younger generations need need this and the children need to go even though now they're in school, but there's some problems that some schools have closed. And I know this is not the, our topic of banking, but it is a topic that affects in general our, our community. So uh, I always like to share all of that. Do you have children? Are they in school? 
Well, I, I do. So, so I have a blended family of six children. They oh. have not fully engaged in school yet. Um, they are still virtual, but they will be returning to classes within the next couple of weeks. Which you know, I have my has. I have, it is good. I, it, they're they're really. You know, I feel bad for the children because learning from home, they're not taking in the same no. amount. Um, no. They're the social interaction. You know, the just the learning capability, the absorption, the absorption of information is completely different. So it, it's it's really a detriment to them. I believe that the classroom setting is really where you learn the most. That's where so you hopefully learn. we can get back to normal soon for them. Absolutely. And there was a study recently, um, I don't recall now, but I, I read about the fact that that it, of 30 students, like 27 want to go back to school. Like there's mm -hmm. only three that want to stay. And right. we, I remember when I was a kid, I would hate have to go to school, go to school. And all the children, I want to go to school. I want to go to school. Right. So that just tells you how, how things change in the world. So Louis, anything we left out that we that you want to emphasize before we close the show? Um, no, I, I, you know, honestly, you know, it's we as a community are resilient mm -hmm. uh, just by nature, especially the, the Hispanic population within South Florida. Uh, we have been, it's a resilient culture that have, has overcome many, many challenges uh, in the past over history. So, you know, this is just another, you know, notch on the belt for us. Exactly. We're going to get through this. We get through it together. Let's exactly. continue to practice our safety precautions. Very important. Follow CDC guidelines. Those mm -hmm. are the experts. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's just try Wear to get back mask. on track together. Exactly. Wear your masks, wash your hands, and we'll get back on, tra on track together. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i like that the positive mind like me always positive well thank you thank you so much Luis. Luis arango wow dear friend and member of the south florida hispanic chamber an honorary board member of ours thank you so much for being here with us today on a business minute with lily lopez <music>